brother will turn to Matthew 16, verses, I believe, 2 and 3. Actually, 1, one through 3. 1 through 3. And we're going to turn Zion to Luke 12, starting at verse 54. Son, how I'm doing okay on the mic? Okay. All right. All right. Praise God. Check it out. All right. All right. Okay. Okay, read for us, my brother. Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 through 3. Amen. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. Y'all know it's getting serious when the Pharisees and the Sadducees hang out together. It's showing sure up serious. Come on, man of God. He answered Come on. and said unto them, when it is evening, when, when it's evening, Ye say, this is what you say. It will be fair weather. It will be good weather. For the sky is red. The sky is red. And in the morning, in the morning, it will be foul weather. It will be foul weather. Why? Today. Why? For the sky is red and lowering. Real dark and gloomy. Come on. Oh, ye hypocrites. Oh, ye hypocrites. hypocrites. Ye can discern the face of the sky. Yes, you can. But can ye not discern the signs of the times? Uh, yeah, yeah. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Luke chapter 12, verse 54 through 56. And he said also to the people, when you see a cloud rise out of the west, straightway you say there cometh a shower, and so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say there will be heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites. You can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that you do not discern this time how is it that you cannot discern this time look at your neighbor and I want you to look right in their face and ask them this question can't you see what's going on So, so in Matthew chapter 16, he's dealing with the, the religious leaders. He said, man, y'all, y'all, y'all a trip. Because y'all can, y'all can, y'all can predict weather. You're good weather, man. When the sky is red, you're able to say it's going to be good weather, and it is. And then when the sky is red, but it's dark and gloomy, you're able to say it's going to be foul weather. And most of the time, you're right. So how is it that you can predict the weather so good, but you can't discern the signs of the time? And then he says to the people, he says to this large group of people, he says, you, he says you're able to see that when there is a cloud in the sky, that it's going to be rain. And, and when you feel the wind blow from the south, you're able to, to say, oh, it's going to be a heat wave. And you're right most of the time. But how is it you cannot discern the signs of the time? Can't you and I see what's going on? Jesus is talking to this crowd of people. And, and, and I, I have no reason to, to not believe that there was maybe some believers in this crowd. But most of them 
are on the fence. Y'all, y'all ever heard on the fence Christians? Are on the fence believers, which means they have not yet made a decision whether they want to follow Jesus or not. They're, they're in a place of curiosity and they're in a place of indecision. And so Jesus' ministry is, 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 is pretty well known by this time. By the time we get to Luke 12 and t- by the time we get to Matthew 16, Jesus' fame is known throughout all the region. They've seen him heal people. They've seen him raise the dead. They've seen him feed hunt thousands of people with just a little bit of food. They've see- heard him teach. They've seen the miracles. And yet they're still on the fence. Still wondering, I don't know if this Jesus guy checks out or not. I don't know what to do. They're in a place of decision after seeing his work. Jesus says, if you don't believe me for my name's sake, then believe me for the work that I do. They're on the fence. And Jesus uses their ability to discern the skies and to predict the weather to Bring them into condemnation. Jesus, Jesus, he knows he's a smart teacher. Jesus uses language that he knows they understand. So Jesus says to them, he he knows that they know the region. Everybody say they know the region. Yeah, they know the region. Just like some of y'all know, they know y'all know the little the little alleyways. You know, some people just know the major highways, amen. And some people know the back way, amen, amen. Uh, uh, riding with my mama, amen. She always in Ocala. She always had me. Hey, mama, I know you probably watching, amen, amen. She probably have us. She always got me going in the back alley, amen. I say, mama, I don't know all these ways. I just know the main streets. I don't live here. So Jesus uses what he knows that they are familiar with. He knows that they know the weather. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said, when you say that the clouds form in the west over the Mediterranean Sea, and I've actually had the privilege of me and my wife was in Italy, and we saw the Mediterranean Sea. Oh, my God, you talking about a beautiful thing? And he said, when you, when you see the clouds form on the Mediterranean Sea, you know that rain is on the way. And when you feel that heat wave coming from the south, from the Arabian desert, you're able to say that a heat wave is coming, yet you cannot interpret and discern this time. Open your eyes, church. Open your eyes, people of God. Young people, 18 and under, open your eyes. Middle-aged people, open your eyes. Elderly, open your eyes. I have a message for every one of you all. My God, I have a message for every one of you all. Watch this. Before I give you that message, I want you to look at Luke 12. I got to give you context for Luke chapter 12. Watch this. First part of Luke 12, Jesus has to encourage his disciples. The reason why he has to encourage his disciples because they are feeling the intensity of being a follower of Christ. Before it was popular to be a follower of Christ, now it's becoming dangerous to follow Jesus. They feel in the heat. Then Jesus gives a parable about greed. Did y'all hear what I said? In the same chapter, Jesus gives a parable about greed. Y'all got to follow me by the Holy Ghost. That man, the Bible say, and the Lord and the Lord blessed his crops. The ground blessed his crops. And the man says, I don't know what to do with all this, this extra stuff. He said, I know what I do. I'll, I'll tear these barns down and I'll build bigger barns. And I'll tell my soul, soul be at ease. And Jesus and God said, tonight you fool, your soul is required of thee. It's a parable of greed. Y'all still with me? He has to encourage his disciples because intensity is picking up because they're followers of Christ. Then he talks about a parable about greed. Then he tells them, he gives scriptures about not being anxious. Hmm. Can y'all see it yet? He gives them, a, he gives them a, 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 a words to not be anxious. He encourages them. Then he talks about his unexpected return. All, all in the same chapter. And then he closes the chapter by telling his disciples and the people to have good judgment or to have good discernment. Everybody say discernment, which means you have to open your eyes and see what's going on. Look at our nation. Look at our cities. Look at our communities. Look at our neighborhoods. Look at our families. Look at our children. Look at our home life. Yeah, take a look. Take a look. Look at this community. Look at these neighborhoods. Look at our nation. 
Open your eyes and see what's going on. Here's what's happening. Since, since, since y'all don't want to talk back to me, we are now calling wrong right now. So what used to be wrong is now called right. And what used to be called right is now called wrong. I never thought I'd see a day when what was wrong is now right. And now what was right is now wrong. We live in a nation where everything is turned upside down. Can't you see it? You literally have to actually turn your head to see things in its right perspective because man has warped everything. And we keep misjudging and wrongly interpreting the solution needed for our land. Okay, can I talk to my groups now? Youth and young people in school, all my, all my youth, you will now be known as the pandemic generation. Young people, you he, he, listen to the preacher this morning. You will be known as the pandemic generation. Your school life has been interrupted. Your academic journey has been interrupted. The way you are educated has been interrupted. And it is the topic of argument and concern by both parents and teachers. But that is not your most important concern. Young adults, college graduates, I got a message for you. I, I know you've invested thousands of dollars in the education. I know you've put in a hundred thousand dollars, amen, for education that seems worthless now. You can't find a job, amen. You live in a world that's paralyzed by fear, uh, and, and, and you find yourself frustrated. You find yourself frustrated. You can't find a job. You don't put in a thousand job applications. You can't find a job in the, in, the, in the employment sector. But this is not your biggest concern either. <laughs> parents. Oh, parents. I know you're frustrated. You never, you, never, you never thought that you would have to homeschool your children. You, you said, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to work this, this computer thing. I don't know what I'm, I know you're feeling frustrated, amen, but I, I do want to encourage the parents. God is using chaos in the society to bring order in your home. Yeah, so, so I, mom and daddy, it is going to get better, but there is something even bigger than your children being homeschooled that needs your attention. To the age and elderly population, we thank God for you. And I know this virus, this COVID-19 virus frightens you. And I know you might feel that you're vulnerable. You're the most vulnerable people of all of this pandemic. But I want you to know there is a bigger issue that needs your attention. What is the issue, preacher? What is the issue that needs my attention? I'm glad that you asked. There is a bigger concern that you and I have, and that is the salvation of the Lord. You and I need to really get saved. I'm, I'm going to take my glasses off. The thing that you and I need to be concerned about is are we saved? Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me now. Y'all don't want to talk to me now. The biggest issue is are you saved for real? Open your eyes and see what's going on in this nation. When is it? When is it time to get saved, preacher? Now is the time. When, when is it? To, when is it time to get saved, preacher? Now. Is that you, you mean, do I have time? No, you don't have time. I don't care if you're 11 or if you're 110. You don't have time to wait. Now is the time. Second Corinthians 6 and 2. For he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted. And then the day of salvation have I secured thee, which means he persisted you. He lent out his hand to you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Look at your neighbor and say, open your eyes, open your eyes. See what's really going on. The Bible says that Jesus is talking to a crowd of people. The scripture says it's an innumerable crowd, which means there are so many people that you cannot count them all. Brother, there are so many people that you cannot count them all. Jesus is talking to a multitude of multitudes in Luke chapter 12. 200 years ago, I want y'all to follow me. 200 years ago, you know how many people was on this planet? One billion people. I'm going to let this sink in. There are now 7.8 
billion people on planet Earth. I want this to sink in. I want this to sink. 200 years ago, there was 1 billion people on the planet. There are now 7.8 billion people on the Earth. And Jesus is asking all 7.8 billion, can't you see what's going on? you see y'all can't see what's going on everyone is looking around but no one's looking up everybody's looking around ain't nobody looking up though we have returned to the church building but the altars are still empty I don't see no bodies on the altar the church buildings are full but there's no bodies on the altar Altars are not made for plants. They're made for bodies. And I don't see no altars full. I see empty altars. Can't you see what's going on? People don't want a truth that makes you live right. People want a truth that makes you feel good. We want truth that changes like, 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 like thermostats. We want a truth that makes me feel you ought to feel bad and do right. We want a truth that makes us feel good instead of making us walk right. Preachers want to want to do presentational speaking and motivational speaking instead of preaching with power and anointing. Set the captives free. You don't have a problem with PowerPoint slides, but sometimes you got to put the PowerPoint slide away and you need the preaching of the gospel. Therefore, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Knowing that God is, is a God around. Oh, he's a God. No, don't say that. That scripture says that. Oh, I thought it was just a God of love. He's also the God around. Knowing that he's a God around, you better get out in the streets. You better tell your family, get saved before it's too late. You better persuade as many men as you can. Amen. Can't you see what's going on? He calls the crowd. Elder. He calls the crowd hypocrites. He calls the, the religious leaders in Matthew hypocrites. He calls the crowd hypocrites. That's a strong word, ain't it? Hi hypocrites is not one of them nice little words. Amen. Back then, that was like fighting words. Amen. Rocker, hypocrite. <laughs> Those are fighting words. Like in Jesus' day. He says, you all are a bunch of hypocrites. Can you put the camera, can you put the camera on, on her for a second? Can y'all got the camera on her? Y'all got the camera on this lady? This is my wife. And, I, and sometimes, not all the time, I drive her crazy. I, I, drive, I drive this woman crazy because I can see a small piece of paper in a corner of the house. And yet, I can't see all the piles of my paper that I put on the kitchen table. I, can, I, I got x-ray vision to see a small piece of paper all the way in the corner of the house. And yet, I got all kind of papers on top of it. And you, we can't even eat dinner sometimes because I got all my work paper, which means I see what I want to see. Oh, Y'all ain't, ain't going to help me. I see what I want to see. And you all are just like that. You see what you want to see. And Jesus is telling the church, you see what you want to see. You see injustice. You see sin. You see disobedience. But you don't open your mouth and speak to that. But you want to take up other causes. That God haven't even put his uh, anointing on. Touch your name and say, you see what you want to see. Open your eyes. See what's really going on. Your family is in jeopardy. 
Your marriage is in danger. Your children's life is on the line. Open your eyes. Open. Can't you discern the times? How are we doing? We learning? Everybody say discernment. Discern the times. Discern the times. Discern the times. Watch this. Oh, my Lord, this is so good. My God, this is good. Y'all pray for me. I got to go. I got to go into a sensitive area. So Jesus says, you can predict weather. And you can do it pretty accurate. You can see the clouds, the, the wind. You can look at the, the colors of the sky and you're able to predict. Yet somehow you cannot see spiritual signs. So I asked God, God, was it? what is it in this generation, especially the younger generation, what is it that they all understand? I asked God that question. God said, God said they understand technology. Whew. Yeah, we going there today. Oh, we going there today. God said they understand technology. Whew. So re remember the three Hebrew boys when they was in Babylon? They took the finest and the best of the, of the, of the children of Israel. And then they built the image, right, to Nebuchadnezzar. And the herald, the Chaldean herald, he, he cried. He said, when you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, watch this, and all kinds of music, you will fall down and worship the image that Nebuchadnezzar has set up. This thing that's in your hand? This is going to be the very thing that's going to, something going to come on your phone and it's going to tell you to bow down to an image that defies the true and living God. Watch, watch us. I'm guilty too. God help me. I'm guilty too. Walking down the street and I'm like this. See my body language? See where my head is? My head is well down. See what I'm worshiping? This might be the thing. I'm pretty sure this is the thing. The technology is going to tell us bow down to an image that defies the true and the living God. Open your eyes, young people. Open your eyes, young people. Why can't we see the spiritual signs in front of us? Youth, why can't you see what's happening to your classmates when they disobey? It turns out the same way every time. It ain't like half the time it turned out good. No, every time children disobey, every time young people disobey, it turns out tragically. Why can't you see what's really going on? You don't always have to learn by experience. You can also learn by observation. Uh -huh. On behind First Street, there's a, there's a little canal. There's a pond. And my mom used to always say, I've been, I ever catch you swimming in that canal. But you know about it. Behind First Street. And then some boys drowned. And my mom said, you see why I told you? See, I learned by observation. If I learned by experience, I wouldn't be here preaching to y'all. Young people, why you can't open your eyes and see what's going on to people your age who disobey their parents and disobey authority? Why can't you see what's going on? Why do you just kind of just push that out your memory and keep watching TikTok videos like, 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 you, ain't, like you ain't seen nothing? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm coming for you today because you refuse to open your eyes.
parents, why aren't, you, why aren't you opening your eyes and see what's really going on with your children? Your children are having sex. Yes, they are. Your children are smoking reefer. Amen. Your children are on meth. Some of your children. Yeah, and you won't open. You, you're lying to yourself. Amen. Tell me, hey, my child is all right. You don't even have told you. Can't you open your eyes and see what's going on with Susie and little Joe? Or are you in denial? I don't care who gets mad at me. You better open your eyes and see what's going on. She ain't as pure as you think she is. He he got that he got that expensive uh, toy or that game console. He ain't getting that from a paper route. And you ain't gonna ask him where he got that from. You not gonna ask him where he got that from. It's my friends. He let me hold it. Twelve hundred dollars. I feel the resistance. I'm going to keep on preaching. Because you got to open your eyes right now. You better open your eyes, church, and save your family. Married people, I ain't going to leave you out. Why don't you open your eyes and pay attention to your spouse? Your spouse is lonely. Your spouse wants to go out sometime. Your spouse wants to be talked to. Amen. I'm going to be wrong. Your spouse don't only want you to put hands on them. Y'all know what I mean. Amen. Your spouse sometimes wants you to talk to. Oh, yeah, I'm preaching. I'm preaching so I can help your marriage. You got to pay attention to your spouse sometimes. Put down the remote and talk to your spouse. Women, put down the phone and talk to your spouse. I came loaded this morning. Open your eyes. She, she seemed withdrawn lately. I wonder why. He, he won't open up. I wonder why. He never want to talk. I wonder why. She never want to talk. I wonder why. Open your eyes. Put some QT in. Quality time. Open your eyes, saints. Mayor, open your eyes. See what's happened to your city. To the governor, open your eyes. See what's happened to your state. Mr. President, open your eyes. I'm looking in the camera. Mr. President, Open your eyes and see what's happening to this country. Preacher, open your eyes and see what's happening to your church. People don't grow and they're not being saved. It's not a church. If you just collect money, it's not a church. If people do not grow and are saved, it's not a church. If you have a church and you only raise money, you're not a church. You're fundraising, but you ain't a church. The church is about the souls of men. Open your eyes, saints. The evidence is clear. Deputy, the, the evidence is clear and it's overwhelming. We need a savior. <laughs> Romans 8, Romans 10, 9 through 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We need a savior. We need a healer. Some look at someone and say, we need a healer. Psalms 103, 1 through 4. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, and healeth all thy diseases, who redeems thy life from destruction. Who redeems thy life from COVID-19. Who redeems thy life from cancer. And crowneth us with love and kindness. We need, a, we need a healer. We need a savior. Open your eyes. We need some things. 
we ain't all right. Oh, we all right. No, we ain't. Oh, look, look, we ain't. I came home. Been at the church all day. I'm, I'm just been at the church all day trying to get the, that other side cleared away. I'm running errands. I'm hot. <laughs> I come home. I'm sweaty. Got to take her out because you know, it's been a rough week. So we go out, do a little, do a little husband and wife time, get a bite to eat, do a little shopping. We come back. I come home. I see my little car. All the sap from the trees. <laughs> all on the car. <laughs> the little birds, the fowls of the air done fouled my car. <laughs> and I'm tired. I see the condition. <laughs> oh, this going to help us. <laughs> but I'm tired. God say, you can go in the house if you want to. But then you're going to have to get up early <laughs> and deal with the condition. See, the condition has to be dealt with. When? See, if I had a newer car, it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't have been a question because on a newer car, if you leave that stuff on a newer car, it'll strip the paint. Good. I'm, who am I preaching to? It'll strip the paint if you leave on it on with a brand new paint job. It'll strip the paint away. And God is telling the church, open your eyes before things begin to strip away. So I went and got the water hose. And I, and I, I cheated a little bit. I, I got that palm olive. <laughs> that dawn, that good stuff. And got that rag real soapy, amen. And I hit all the rough spots. Amen. Y'all know how I did. Because <laughs> the conditions say you better take care of it. Now, look at some of say, I'm going to take care of the condition. Now, See, that means some of y'all got to go home and take care of things like today. Some of y'all can't wait the next week. Y'all going to have to go home right after church and take care of the condition. Because the condition just looking at you like, you going to fix this? under attack December 7th I believe 1940 something Pearl Harbor came under attack on a Sunday on a Sunday on a Sunday Japanese bombers came in and boom we're under attack church we're under attack everything we stand for everything we hold dear everything that God has prescribed and anointed and ordained is under attack open your eyes we're not all we're going to be all right, but we're not all right. We're going to be all right. Because in the end, he wins. Just go to the end of the book and read the end of the story. You can cheat. <laughs> we win. But it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a fight. It's going to be a war. But King Jesus is going to win. He's going to spoil. He's going to spoil all the spoils. He's going to take their crowns and put it on his head. And he'll be called King of Kings, Lord of, and every knee will bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Shake you out of my See, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. We need a deliverer. No, we need a deliverer. Psalms 18, 2 and 3. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, and whom I need. I need my Bible readers now. In whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from, I feel the, from my enemies. I feel the Holy Ghost. And lastly, we need a counselor. Anybody need a counselor? Oh, we need a counselor. Oh, yeah, we need a counselor. Oh, we need a counselor. 
Glory be to God. Isaiah 9 and 6. Y'all know where I'm going. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Comma. Counselor. <laughs> Comma. When I was little, I used to think, I thought it was Wonderful Counselor. <laughs> He's a counselor. Anybody need a counselor? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm almost done. In my opinion, in my humble opinion, one of the greatest prayers that was ever prayed in the Bible is Elisha for his servant. The Syrian army had seized the whole city. And the servant elder is worried. <laughs> he said, there's more of them than it is of us. And Elisha the prophet prayed a simple prayer. He said, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. And, he, and the Lord opened his eyes. And he saw the host of the Lord in flames of fire. And he said, there'll be more of the hosts of the Lord. Then it'll be able to open your eyes, not to scare you, not to intimidate you, not for you to be fearful. Open your eyes. I don't care how bad it looks. There is a host of the Lord surrounding you, surrounding your house, surrounding your children, surrounding your family, surrounding your marriage. Open your eyes so that you see God is on your side. Touch your neighbor to the left and the right and tell him God is on our side. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Open your eyes so that you can see what's really going on. There'll be more of God than it is of them. And we're going to make it. We're going to make it going to discern properly both good and evil and I preach and minister this everywhere I go your discernment is not only to, to say oh something wrong with him no your discernment is also to know good stop being, stop being the boogeyman watcher my spirit just don't feel right about around them like all the time that's you don't feel nothing good about nobody I don't know. I just don't know. Your discernment is for good and evil. You got to properly judge. You got to properly judge. You got to properly judge. Some of your biggest blessings going to come from people who you thought was your enemy. And some of your biggest problems going to come from people who you thought was your friend. That's a drop the mic moment, but I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it, but that's a drop the mic moment. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to destroy the church property. Amen. I can't afford to replace it. Stand to your feet, Zion. Open your eyes. Husbands, pray for your wives and your children. Mothers, pray for your children. Elders and ministers, pray for this church. Armor bearers, pray for, for your leaders. Pray now, right now, in the name of Jesus. Give me something, son. Give me something. Pray right now. Pray. Husband, pray for your wives. Father, pray for your children. Mother, pray over your household. Right now, pray, pray, pray. Those who work in law enforcement, those who work with the public, those who work in the hospital, begin to pray over the agencies. Pray over the agencies. The institutions that are ordained by God. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. I'm a bearer. Pray for your leaders. Elders and ministers, pray for your church. Pray for the ministry. Pray for the people. There it is. There it is. Open your eyes and see. And see. Open your eyes and see what's going on. What's going on spiritually. Discern. Spiritually. 
spiritually discern. Spiritually judge. Is that of God or is that not of God? That's the question. Is that of God? Is that not of God? Test every spirit and see whether it be of God. Judge, discern. You're able to do it. You have the spirit of God on the inside. I'm not a prophet. You don't need a prophet to discern. You have the spirit of God on the inside of you. You have the spirit of God on the inside of you. You can discern. Hallelujah. Father, thank you now for this message. Thank you for the gift of discernment. Thank you for the ability to judge properly whether it is of you God or whether it is of the enemy and of the world Lord we can discern so many things the weather we can discern stock market results trends and patterns we can analyze data but God we need to be able to discern the signs of the times give us spiritual eyesight Help us to see what is of you. Thank you, Father God, that we will not leave anything in a wrong condition when you bring it to our attention. We will deal with it properly and we will deal with it in time. And that time is now. Lord, if there's someone who hears this message and is hearing my voice and they're not saved, they're not accepted the, the pardon of Jesus Christ who died on the cross for their sins, Lord, may they now open their mouth and pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for my sins. Thank you, God, for, for taking my guilt away. I give my life to you totally and completely. I surrender my life and my will. I give my heart to you now. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for making me into a new creation. Thank you for turning me around. Thank you for putting your Holy Spirit on the inside of me and giving me your truth. I thank you and I praise you that I'm saved and I'm forgiven. And we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus and all of God's people said, Amen. 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 We hope you have enjoyed our broadcast, we're praying for you. We're praying that God will open your eyes that you may be, be able to discern the signs of the time. Until next time, grace, peace, and mercy. Amen. From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We love you all. God bless you.